Chris Arnzen, uh, the world famous host of Iron Sharpens Iron. We can only hope to someday um, have the the just the, the the acclaim in the broadcasting world that uh, Iron Sharpen, Sharpens Iron has. And, of course, the perfect announcer voice of Chris Arnzen. Um, just, uh, you know, just, we all look up to Chris in that way. Uh, just want to be like him someday. Um, <laughs> I can hear him laughing even now. <laughs> anyway, um, Chris worked for, like, I think he said once, like a year to put together a debate. Now, what I heard at the very end of the debate is it's not over. They're going to do a third program at some point, hopefully fairly soon, uh, where audience questions can be handled because there wasn't time for audience questions in, in what was uh, done. But Don Preston uh, and Mr. Frost um, debated the subject of hyperpreterism. And man, there's, there, are, there are so many questions uh, that that encounter uh, raised that were not answered um, for me, especially because, you know, I'm familiar with the outlines of hyperpreterism. Of the two days, the second to me was, and just look up Iron Sharpens Iron, Chris Arnzen, um, grab the archive of this because it is uh, really, really well worth listening to the uh, the encounter. The second day was most helpful for me. Um, both days tended to get a little bogged down, I thought, in some uh, less than helpful weed tromping through some obscure passages. I mean, when you sit back and listen to the second day, the, the fundamental point that I got from Preston's uh, presentation was that the primary context in which 1 Corinthians chapter 15 has to be interpreted is Hosea 13. And that's not the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Um, and so the actual meaning of agnosticism, the actual issue that uh, Paul is addressing with the Corinthians, all that just sort of gets lost, and you get this framework, this complex framework uh, based upon time passages and things like that, uh, is put together by Preston that then takes over everything. Thankfully, in the process of having this discussion, um, Frost, who is a who used to sort of be Preston's right hand man, they spoke at the same conferences, things like that. But he's come out of hyperpreterism. Thankfully, he brought out the fact that once, and and this is true from a number of different perspectives. I've seen this. I've seen people fall into this stuff from a lot of different directions. You get the idea that you have seen something that no one else has ever seen. Because it, it seems like Preston did admit that pretty much the only people that have ever seen this has been he and his group. And everybody else has been wrong from the start on this. And once you really convince yourself of that, that that's, yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the only one that's gotten this. Then to make it work, to continue to make it work as it becomes questioned and cross-examined, um, fundamental central doctrines get sacrificed. And so the idea of the resurrection body of Jesus becomes totally redefined in hyperpreterism in this form. That's the other part. That's the other problem is this form of hyperpreterism. So I'm sure somebody else has a different form and takes a different, you know, you've got all these different perspectives that could be taken. But thankfully it came out, Preston did basically say, that 
If I understood him correctly, he was saying that Jesus rose the self-same body in which he died, and he ascended in that body, but he no longer has that body. If I was understanding where he was, he was making the assertion that there was a true physical resurrection of the body, but Jesus doesn't have that body any longer. He's put aside somehow. If you're familiar with Jehovah's Witnesses, they say the same thing. Uh, either his body was dissolved into gases or it's on display as a memorial to, Yah- to Jehovah's love somewhere in the universe or something like that. But, but he is no longer the God-man, even though Preston would say, oh, yes, he is, because a man doesn't have to have a physical body. So there is this whole, a complete overthrow of what anastasis means um, and the importance of physical resurrection, saying, well, but obviously Jesus was still a man before the physical resurrection, while he was in the grave, he's still a man, uh, even though he went and proclaimed the spirits in prison, so on and so forth. So, but the point being that God made us to be a body-soul unity, and that's why the resurrection is so important, that it's an unnatural state to be disembodied, and that's why the resurrection is going to take place. But at least that came out with a fair amount of clarity, and so you could start seeing just how many cardinal, central aspects of the faith are sacrificed to just maintain this one framework system. And in the first uh, program, it was brought up that you know, from this perspective, we are in the eternal state. There is, there is nothing, this is just how it's going to keep on going and going and going and going. We're in the eternal state. And you're just like, oh, great. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a bad thing. Um, what are all the ramifications that would have to come from that? There, there, would, be, there would be a lot of them. Um, so it's... it's uh, I'm really thankful that it was done. I'm looking forward to the third program. It will help. I think a lot of people could be very confused by it because it is just so far outside of what anybody is accustomed to that, you know, I mean, I'm not saying don't go and listen to it. Yeah, go ahead and listen to it. But you might find it somewhat difficult to follow because it's all bets are off. Let's just put it that way. Uh, the, the foundations are completely different. And um, the debate was not designed to give you the background to really understand it. It, it, would, it would almost be worth the effort to, to have somebody do a program that would give you a clear summary statement of what the issues are uh, so that once the debate starts, you're like, oh, okay, well, that's why that guy is concerned about this or that or the other thing and it might be helpful along those lines. But uh, it was uh, very, very, very uh, interesting uh, to me. And um, so I wanted to make mention of it, make reference to it and um, go from there.